Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today is mid-December and it's very wet and very miserable and we are reviewing the 2020 Renault Coleos. Now the Coleos is top of the Renault SUV line, so you have the Captur, the Kajar and then the Coleos. And you can really see the design language from the other two coming into this one. It looks very similar to the Kajar, but it's just kind of a, a bit bigger, a bit musclier, a bit more chiseled shall we say but uh, it's a good looking car i like it please do let us know what you think in the comments um yeah so we'll have a look around do the usual and get in out of this wet and miserable weather <laughs> so we'll start at the back how do you feel about the back looks i think it looks quite nice i do like the lights this is a nicely designed head uh rear light looks really well i like the sharp run across here some chrome around some fake exhausts, uh, take it or leave it. Boot is an electric tailgate. Good and lazy. So, with the seats up you have 565 litres of space and with the pull of a lever either side you can drop the back seats down, which is very handy. To reveal quite a lot of load space and if you did have larger items, many would fit in very easy. Underneath there is a hidden floor where you can store stuff and there seems to be some those window rain deflector things which I hate so we will leave them under there. And a rubber floor mat which is always handy for days like today and it's wet and miserable and mucky and you can load up the boot and not wreck your carpet. Plus good and lazy to close the boot too. Now in the back Renault have gone with maybe a different approach to some of their competitors like the X-Trail or the Kodiak which offer seven seats. The Kodiak will only come with five seats, you won't have two hidden in the boot or anything like that. So that might put some people off who would like the extra seats. The upshot of that is the space back here is excellent, it's almost limousine like, like I have acres here in front of my knees. Loads of headroom, loads of headroom, very comfortable like loads of room it'd be a very nice place to be driven around in that's for sure and you're actually up nice and high lots of light and you can see out real easy it's it's very nice back here the seats are covered in leather and very comfortable you have your armrests with your cup holders two usb charging ports down here and a 12 volt some nets and two isofix points either side so while it doesn't have the seven seats if you only had two kids and you wanted lots of space a good shout. I'm sitting behind myself at six foot, loads of leg room. Yeah, nice back here. Limousine-esque, you might say. See, see, all this space. Now the entry price for a Coleos is in around 42,000 euro. And today we are in the higher spec GT line and that starts at in around 45,000 euro before you pop on any extras. So it is, kind of a premium price you're you're in around that and it, to be fair it does feel premium in here for the most part there are a couple of cheaper materials but a lot of the stuff you touch like the steering wheel elbow stuff <laughs> that all feels premium and it is it is a nice place to be without <laughs> without sounding cliched it is a nice place to sit the seats are very comfortable they're perforated leather and they're just nicely sponged and yeah, they're really good seats. I did like the seats a lot. They're just, they're right. Don't know if I'm a massive fan of the wood detailing here. It kind of has an 80s kitchen vibe to it that I don't really like. There's also ambient lighting color options that comes in across the top of the wooden detailing here as well. And that looks quite nice to be fair. To keep the premium feel, there's stuff coated in leather, of course, because leather equals premium. And these handles here are all leather. The glove box is covered in leather with the stitching, looks quite nice. The central storage is also covered in leather and it's actually a decent sized storage space too. Now the cup holders are heated and cooled apparently, so I don't know if I'll be able to capture it on camera, but there's a little vent down here beside the cup holders and you pop it up and down and I'm guessing that's hot and cold, but I can barely feel it and I can't necessarily, I don't know. I have no idea if it works or not, but there you go. We have heated seats also, and we have park assist, so it will help you parallel park 
uh, Bay Park or Slanty Park as well, if you really need it. Like it's a big car, but it's not massive. I, I never felt like, oh God, this is way too big. I need help in that area because there's cameras and sensors. So you could have cameras, sensors and help parking for this thing. So if you scrape it, it's your own damn fault. <laughs> in front of me, we have the portrait mode screen, which is, I don't know, I prefer landscape over portrait, but that's personal preference. It's pretty decent. Response could be a tiny bit quicker. You're talking tiny margins now, but technology today, go away, cat. Go away, go away. It is a bit annoying the way the air conditioning works because you have to press lots of buttons to organize it. There is some overriding buttons here, but there is a lot of the control in the screen, which is a bit frustrating and not something I am a fan of. There's also all the modern safety features like lane departure warning, uh, blind spot monitoring, braking assist, all that good stuff to keep you safe. Now there was two little niggly things that have annoyed me. First, with the gear selector, it was obviously set up for people driving on the left hand side and they didn't bother to change it around because when I'm sitting here and I'm changing, I can't actually see the little details here to tell me what I'm in, whether it's park, drive, reverse, neutral. It's actually hidden by the like leather and the, the gear stick. So every time I have to kind of look around. Now, fair enough, most people will learn that pretty quick when you're driving it more than I have, but it's annoying. It's annoying. It's just, you're like, oh, where was that? Okay, yeah. And the second annoyance was the case of Nemo because I could not find this for the life of me when I was driving home. I was looking for cruise control and I was like, That's, it's on the steering, like it's always on the steering or under the stalks here or somewhere around the steering wheel because that makes sense because it's cruise control. Oh wait, it's down here beside the parking e-brake. It's two little buttons to set your cruise control. I've not seen that before. <laughs> It frustrated the life out of me. This should be up here. Two buttons, cruise control. Not there. But hey. Okay, we'll take it for a spin. So behind the wheel of the 2020 Coleos. Engine lineup is pretty straightforward. There is a 1.7 diesel and a two liter diesel. Today we are in the 1.7 diesel. So we have 150 brake horsepower, 340 Newton meters of torque, and 0 to 100 is dealt with in about 11.8 seconds. Now the two liter diesel is obviously the more pricey option and that has 190 brake horsepower and you can get it in four wheel drive also, but this is only two wheel drive. And both engines use the same seven speed CVT automatic gearbox. So what's the 1.7 diesel like? Well, it's decent and it probably is all you really need in the Coleos. It's, it's got plenty of torque and plenty of power to get it up and moving and it doesn't particularly feel like the two liter would be essential. Now the gearbox on the other hand, I really wouldn't be a huge fan of. Like it's okay and it works away without much hassle, but it's just got some weird characters which are pretty typical of a CVT gearbox. It's kind of whiny and has weird power selection at times. Just when you put your foot down, it kind of, I'll try it now, I'll put the foot down. And it revs, but very little happens. It takes off okay in the end, but it's just got this revs and then nothing happens and then it all happens and then it half changes and it's okay if you don't, if you don't do that, if you're not really annoying the gearbox and just take it handy, it's fine. But um, yeah, not my favorite gearbox in the world. I probably would have preferred just a manual or a standard auto that would have done the job perfectly well. Just, I don't know, diesel and CVT, meh. Not a great combination. Hybrid and CVT seems to have hit a sweeter point now where they've worked out how to stop it doing some odd things. It's still not great, but it's better than a diesel and a CVT. That's my two cents on the subject. Fuel economy I have found pretty decent. The quoted figure from Renault is 6.2 litres. We're seeing 7, 7.1, which is pretty close. And for a big car with a lot of kit, and I'm sure it's quite heavy, that's pretty good. Obviously the Coleos is kind of aimed at premium SUV market. So you want it to be a nice, comfortable cruiser that can eat up the miles without much hassle. And to be fair, this thing does that very well. I did a few motorway journeys on it and that's where it excels. It's nice and quiet, really refined, 
wind noise is really kept at bay the road noise is really kept at bay it's very comfortable and i think you'd be very happy in the back of this thing being driven around even on more old school irish back roads it's actually pretty decent with dealing with the lumps and bumps and all that kind of stuff that is typical of our roads it uh, smooths out most things the only thing that really upsets it is a it's one sharp bump or a sequence of sharp bumps whatever way it's damped it it really crashes it into the cabin a bit too much but yeah like i said 90 95 percent of those ruts and bumps and crap on the road is dealt with really well and it is very comfortable the handling has surprised me i thought given its size and just given its target audience and what you would expect it to do it wouldn't handle amazingly but it's actually pretty decent it's kind of the steering is really well weighted to suit what you would expect from it as you're going through the corners it just got a nice weighting to it and it has a nice neutral feel you never feel its bulk too much through the corners yeah and a corner's nice and flat nice and easy it's actually a bit of fun which has surprised me it will be more fun without that gearbox but alas that's what we have and it handles yeah it handles really well i've been very surprised by it it's nice it doesn't roll too much either it's just it's just right for a big suv handles impressively we leave it there for this week with the coleos and um, please do like and subscribe if you haven't and that's always greatly appreciated we'll see you again next week for another review thanks a mil and bye bye